So for this options paper, we're going to go through option D. Uh, the first question is, state two processes needed for the spontaneous origin of life on Earth. And from the syllabus, there are four main points that, uh, that you can talk about, but in this case, you only need to talk about two. And I've got my little acronym, which is SASP, and the first one is S. So this is the synthesis, or the non-living synthesis of organic molecules. You need to have a way of turning carbon, oxygen, hydrogen, which aren't intrinsically living within itself. You need to turn that, uh, or a combination of those particular um, elements, into something which is living. Now the second thing is uh, the assembly of these molecules into polymers. After you have uh, an organic molecule, for example, you, you just have a small organic molecule within itself. And that molecule has to be arranged into things which are larger, that can be um, used to make up the building blocks um, of life. It's not enough just to have a small organic molecules. They need to be built up to become larger. Now the third, uh, the third uh, point which you can put down is somewhat along the same tangent. You need to have self-replicating molecules which allow inheritance and essentially what they're talking about here is DNA. So these are self-replicating molecules. Uh, for example, um, you have DNA which can be uh, replicated using enzymes and they allow inheritance of certain genes or certain traits. Once you have these molecules, and these have to be packaged within a cell, and that's the final point that you um, need to know about. I've just taken these directly from the syllabus, uh, the syllabus um, statements, and just choose two which you need, uh, or which you find easy to remember. Now the next point is outline the properties of RNA, so ribonucleic acid, that may have allowed it to play a role in the origin of life. And there are two main points here for two, uh, for this particular question. So firstly, S, self-replicating nature of RNA. Secondly, we're going to talk about the catalytic nature of RNA. So let's talk about the self-replicating nature. What do I mean by that? Well, this is not so obvious in the current, or, um, the current organisms because we have DNA. But um, originally, ribonucleic acid could uh, synthesize other RNA molecules within itself. So you, that's, when you have RNA, you could build up more molecules of RNA within itself. And this is through um, RNA enzymes or, or ribozymes. And um, this is one particular example of how it could, or how life could have started with, uh, with RNA. Now, the second point is that um, there is evidence of ca of the catalytic of nature, of the catalytic nature of RNA, and this is because um, ribosomes, which are currently used to make proteins, are made of RNA within itself. So that means that um, RNA uh, is used currently. Um, to make up a particular organelle, and this can be used to form RNA, um, to to form more RNA or more proteins currently. And the second point on this same line of thought is that RNA can then is then able to be able to be used to store information. And this is also via nu nucleotides, but instead of DNA nucleotides, it's RNA nucleotides. And that's another topic of conversation with itself, but uh, it seems like RNA can be used to store information as well.